Okay, friends, it is June 11th, and today we look at Job chapters 35 through 37. Elihu continues um, his speech uh, and uh, proclaims it all uh, through uh, the end of chapter 37. So let's look at that. Uh, so, uh, Elihu directs his, uh, his remarks to Job, and he continues his argument along the same lines that he has uh, argued before, but with a slightly different focus. He does not argue that Job was inaccurate to say that he had not sinned, but rather that saying so uh, shows a lack of justness, that is, a lack of Job's understanding of what is just. So, so Elihu wants to make the point that whether a person sins or does not sin does not affect God in the least. Um, and being righteous, uh, it offers no benefit to God. Uh, but human beings who are affected by righteous or wickedness. So God remains true to his nature, whatever people do. Um, that doesn't mean that God pays no heed to human behavior. On the contrary, God is ever vigilant. So if the oppressed cry out, Elihu reasons, uh, but they're not answered, it's because, uh, it's because no one says, where is God, my maker? That is, they don't call upon God uh, in a manner proper to prayer. Uh, they do not recognize that God gave them more knowledge than he gave the animals, and therefore humans learn from the animals about God's nature. Um, God does not hear an empty cry. And uh, so uh, what Elihu wants to basically say in the midst of all of this, that Job, your words, your response are worthless. Elihu knows better. In fact, Elihu says his own speech is not false because he is perfect in knowledge. So, so much for Elihu's humility. And Job's, Job, his, his wisdom falls far short. And so he then reiterates at great length and intensity his previous point that God is just and that he punishes the wicked and he rewards the righteous. That's Elihu's uh, conclusion and can sum up his long-winded speech in a sentence. Um, if God's justice appears delayed, and Job seems to suggest that at one point, it's because the righteous are arrogant and need to be shown the error of their ways. Suffering is a wake-up call to obey God. He delivers the afflicted by their affliction. If sufferers listen and serve God, they'll be granted prosperity. If not, they'll perish without knowledge. It's interesting that what we have here in, in uh, this speech is a theme that's already appeared, and that is knowledge or its absence is a repeated theme. We get that. Worse than righteous sufferers who call upon God are the godless in heart who do not cry out to God when they suffer. Um, and this is uh, perhaps a, a pointed criticism of Job, who never asked God to save him, but only rants and rages uh, against what God has done. Uh, so the godless meet an early death, and so Elihu suggests that's what's in store for you unless you repent and fess up. So, um, so we get Elihu who concludes his discourse starting in 3622 with praise of God's power, which he has done this before. One of the things that strikes me and that I want to mention at this point is that we've got a lot of repetition. I mean, I, 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 uh, I sometimes feel in doing these devotions, I want to uh, start one and say, okay, we're in Job today. By the way, second verse, same as the first, let's pray. There's a lot of repetition. And there's a lot of repetition because, as I said earlier, uh, you get a lot of repetition because this is an oral culture. And that means everything is being spoken, everything is being heard. And so you repeat so you know. So you get it in your head, you get it in your brain. So we get a lot of this repetition in this culture for the sake of learning. Um, and it's tough for us who do not live in that culture because we wanna say, okay, Elihu, okay, Job, okay, 
Bill Dad so far. We've heard all of this. Let's move on to the next topic. But again, because there's a lot of repetition necessary, this is what we get. So this is why uh, if you think some of these devotions I've been presenting keep repeating the same things, it's because we're repeating the same themes in the text. So we want to try and get our mind, mind into the folks of the ancient culture. And if there's one benefit to us that even we might hear these themes repeated over and over. And remember the next time we're reading Job. All right. So Elihu continues, God's superiority uh, is, you know, to, to humans is clear and obvious. Uh, the theme of God's power is, is manifested throughout, through thunder and lightning and through the creation. This is a nice little preview of God's speech to Job out of the whirlwind. And uh, Elihu considers, he says to Job, consider the wonderful works of God. Uh, everything that God has done, and so you'll realize that God is perfect and just and the whole bit, uh, and that's how Elihu uh, speech ends. It, it culminates, <clears throat> excuse me, with again uh, his main point that he's been coming back to in one form or another uh, throughout uh, that God is inscrutable and that he's awesome in power and in justice. Uh, and all this should inform us as we fear the Lord, which Elihu intimates Job has not done. All right. So that's the end for today. So tomorrow we actually have two more days in Job and we will finish up with God speaking from the whirlwind. This is important stuff. In fact, this is uh, uh, this, this, uh, this poetic speech of God, I think is some of the best ancient literature that we have. So we're gonna focus on that. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this day. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight and all that we say and do in Jesus name, amen. All right, friends, hasta mañana.